Before we begin, and just so we're clear, I'm neither for nor against buying or rescuing a dog. I simply respect other people's opinions and choices regarding the matter. It really isn't anybody's business to know where your dog comes from. What's more important for me is that when you adopt a dog, or your pet for that matter, is that you give them a forever home. And if you're not comfortable with this, you're free to click away. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's the Poodle Mom again with the two toy poodles. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my red flags when it comes to poodle breeders or breeders for that matter when you're looking for a new pup. If you guys are interested in that, then please keep on watching. Since my experience with Bailey, my number one red flag will always be whether or not the breeder will do the proper health and medical tests prior breeding. This is the main reason why there are so many pups like her that have a lot of genetic health issues and even temperamental issues that results to more homeless dogs because either the owners cannot afford the vet bills or they cannot handle the temper of the dog and they can't hire a trainer to fix it. For my second red flag, the breeder does not know nor study the breed standard. Just think about it. How can you call yourself a professional breeder if you don't even know the proper breed standards? An example would be the ones that call toy poodles as teacup poodles, micro teacup, or for the standards, giant standards, standard giant poodle, and whatnot. If you know the breed standards, then you would know that there is no such thing. The breeder hates being asked too many questions. I am pretty sure that most, if not all, good and responsible breeders would appreciate asking a lot of questions because it shows that you care. It shows that you are being responsible and you are trying to figure out what you're getting yourself into. Now, if your breeder cannot give you updated photos and or videos and they just keep posting the same ones, then that is already a red flag because why? If they truly are the breeder of that puppy, then at any given point in time, I mean, come on, technology, your phones, every single phone these days have cameras. You can easily snag a picture. It doesn't have to be a beautiful picture. It's just to prove that you own the dog and you have the dog as well as the parents. Otherwise, there is a trade going on wherein there's a middleman. So somebody will get puppies from other people and then will sell it as their own. What's more, it's so easy to steal anybody's pictures online. You would never know unless you really do your own research. So that is definitely something to look out for. The breeder doesn't allow kennel visits. Now I understand this is a valid reason during this pandemic, but as simple as doing a FaceTime video with them where they will show you around their kennel, I think that's one way of, you know, compromising. If I were the buyer, I would want to see how my puppies grew up. You see, I have had my fair share of mistakes. And with Summer's case, she came from a breeder that would cage all her dogs there that are stacked up in multiple cages one after the other i actually almost didn't take her because i was worried that you know she might be sick or you know this and that but i actually didn't have the heart to leave her there so i took her home and thankfully i got lucky because i've never had any bad experience with her whereas you know with bailey it's a totally different story the breeder does not do their research when it comes to the buyers. What do I mean by this? For me, research goes both ways. It's not a one-way stream. Just as we as buyers would have to invest the time in researching the breeders, I believe that breeders should also do the same for their buyers. No responsible breeder will just say yes to anyone who presents them money. So the next red flag is the breeder does not offer a written contract or agreement. Now, people are taken aback by this because they think a contract is something written by a lawyer and it's signed under the law and everything, this and that. It, something very, very complicated. But it could be a very, very simple agreement where you jot down your terms and conditions for each other. For example, if I were the breeder, I would require my pups to be spayed or neutered or there comes a time where they can no longer care for my pup that I would be the first person that they will contact because I will also be the one to rehome my pup because I care for where they will go to. So as simple as that. And at the same time, it protects the buyer as well for whatever reason 
that will arise in the future and you can use it as your basis to come into an agreement so that things are clear and fair. All right, for the next red flag, the breeders breed too often. So what is too often for me? It's when they breed every heat cycle. So every female dog goes into heat at least twice a year. So two litters in one year. Pregnancy causes a lot of strain in a female dog's body. It's very taxing to them. So can you just imagine what they go through if they're bred every single heat cycle? That's twice a year. Personally, it's more than enough to breed a female two to a maximum of three or four times in their whole lifespan. That's fair enough and that's healthy enough for them. So it's really up to you. I mean, your own definition of what often means, but that's what it means for me. So the next point, having too many dogs. Now, I will not define what many means because we have our own definitions of what many dogs mean. But in my opinion, there are only a very few set of people who can handle being a responsible breeder and having a lot of dogs. Because from my own experience, and I have mentioned it many times before, poodle maintenance is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. So if you have many dogs, how can you assure that you are giving the right amount of attention, the right amount of training, the right amount of care for those many dogs? So for the last red flag, when the breeder has different breeds of dogs and they call themselves a breeder of different kinds of dogs. Now, I know it's a case-to-case -case basis. Also, there are many who, are, who can actually do it, but more often than not, it's a sign that it could be a puppy mill. Because think about it, for you to breed one breeding line, you'd have to have at least three pairs. And then if you have another breed, then you'd have the same set. And then if you have another breed, then another set like that. How can you possibly care for all of them all at the same time? Give them the proper attention, training, grooming, and leave them free roaming in the house. I can only assume that they would be stacked up in cages. You can't possibly have all those dogs just running around the house and they're all intact. Because imagine if one female goes in heat, then all the male dogs of the different breeds will go cuckoo. So it's a sign for me that it is a puppy male rather than a professional breed. So we hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something from it. Please comment down below if you've had past experiences and maybe your own set of red flags when it comes to these irresponsible breeders so that we can help this um, pet community be more aware, educated, and wary of such breeders in the future. <laughs> that was quite long. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and we will see you again next time. Bye. Should we even post it? <laughs> Should we? This is so warm. Okay. Are we really gonna post this? This is by far one of the scariest videos I've ever made. <laughs> That's the most scary video that I have ever created. The internet can be square. It's really scary. That's why.